Is a grand solar minimum coming? Yes. Well, that was easy, because that's what solar physicists have concluded through numerous published studies and years of research. The question is, what does that mean? The problem comes when the media hear the words grand and minimum and come to this conclusion. Far from heating up, the Earth is actually heading for a new ice age. We're heading into a mini ice age. So in this video, I'm going to answer these basic questions. What is the grand solar minimum? How grand will it be? What will be the effect on global temperatures? And how or why did news reports and blogs get it so wrong? As always, scientific studies are listed in the video description, so you can check them for yourselves. First, what is the grand solar minimum? Well, solar irradiance follows three basic patterns. The longest is a gradual increase in solar luminescence, as more of the sun's hydrogen fuel is fused into helium. But we don't have to worry about that one, because the effect is only felt over hundreds of millions of years. The shortest change is an 11-year cycle caused by changes in the sun's magnetic field. During the peaks, we get flares and sunspots, and the sun gives off a tiny bit more radiation. Now, the swings look huge, but that's only because of the scale. In fact, these swings only change solar activity by about 0.1%. If we represent the variations as a line, the difference between the top and bottom of the line, in other words the peaks and troughs of the cycle, is only about 1.3 watts per square metre. Compare that to the sun's total irradiance of around 1,360 watts per square metre, and you can see how tiny these changes are. So luckily for us, the sun is a pretty stable star. Finally, there are the irregular periods of time when several of these peaks are less active in succession. It's known as a grand minimum, not because it's particularly grand. Solar irradiance only falls by less than 0.3%, but to differentiate it from the ordinary minimum of each 11-year cycle. These ups and downs of peak solar activity happen at various times and for varying periods of time with varying intensity. Patterns have been sought, but none has been definitively found. Solar activity has been dropping for the last two cycles, and solar physicists can see changes in the sun's magnetic field that suggest this marks the start of another grand solar minimum. So the next thing we need to know is how minimum will the coming GSM be? The simple answer is, researchers don't know. So they look at past GSMs as a guide. The studies that have been done found that total solar irradiance for the previous four grand solar minima were between 0.08% and 0.25% lower. The highest figure is for a scenario like the Maunder minimum of the 17th century. The term refers to a minimum solar activity, named after astronomers Annie and Edward Maunder. Unfortunately, a lot of people think the Maunder minimum refers to minimum temperatures, and that's because it occurred in the middle of a cold period called the Little Ice Age, so they assume it must be the cause. In fact, the Maunder minimum can't be the cause, for the simple reason that the Little Ice Age started 200 years before the Maunder minimum began, and it continued for 100 years after the Maunder minimum ended. But what about those frost fairs in London, when the Thames froze over? Well, the Thames froze over 23 times between 1408 and 1814. Only nine of those times occurred during the Maunder Minimum, so that couldn't have been the primary cause. In fact, the Thames continued to freeze over regularly, even when the sun was as active as it is today. The most likely cause, studies have found, was a series of sulphur-rich volcanic eruptions, which reflected sunlight. But they concluded that when the Maunder Minimum happened, between 1650 and 1720, it compounded this cooling. And a GSM has a strong regional effect, which we'll look at in a minute. That would have exacerbated the cooling further in places like Western Europe and the northeast part of North America. So how much of a temperature drop will we see? Researchers have calculated that even if solar irradiance fell to the same level of the Maunder minimum, the resultant drop in global temperature would be less than 0.3 degrees centigrade. 
That's much less than the warming we've seen already this century. So even if nothing else was acting on global temperature, and even if solar activity dropped to the level of the Maunder minimum, it would only take us back to the temperature of 2009. Not a mini ice age or anything like it. And researchers have calculated that even that small amount of cooling can't happen because the forcing due to an increase in greenhouse gases over the next few decades is much greater than the forcing due to a small drop in solar irradiance. Even if the mathematics is hard to fathom, the starkest evidence for that is the fact that we've already seen a drop in solar irradiance over the last two cycles, and global temperatures didn't fall, they rose, thanks to a 25% increase in CO2 concentration during that period. And global temperatures are expected to rise another 2 degrees centigrade in the next few decades as CO2 concentration doubles from pre-industrial revolution levels, far outweighing the 0.25 degrees expected from the GSM. But as I mentioned, several studies did find that a reduction in TSI would have a regional effect. It would reduce ultraviolet radiation, resulting in less ozone being produced in the upper atmosphere. That will affect things like the North Atlantic Oscillation and the Arctic Oscillation, sending winter storms eastwards from Greenland into Europe. There'll be other regional changes, but these still don't mean global cooling, just variations in weather patterns in some places and at certain times. And nowhere near enough to bring on a mini ice age, even in those places most severely affected. Nearly all the scientific studies that have looked into the effects of a grand solar minimum show no possibility of cooling, let alone a little ice age. So where does this myth come from? It's so persistent that posters on my channel are convinced it's true. Well, as always, let's track back to the source and see where all these blogs and tweets and videos are getting their information from. A lot of them cited this article by UPI, a press agency that distributes copied in newsrooms around the world. Earth heading for mini ice age in just 15 years, scientists say. But the UPI story didn't explain who these scientists were, or even quote them. Nor did it cite the scientists who supposedly said the GSM will be accompanied by bitter cold winters, frigid enough to cause rivers like the Thames in London to freeze over. So where did UPI get its information from? Well, if you click the link to this claim, shown in blue, it doesn't take you to any scientists. It takes you to an article in the Daily Telegraph with the same spurious headline. And the UPI tells us it also got information from a report in the Independent newspaper, which ironically is the same newspaper that was claiming a few years ago that snowfalls are now just a thing of the past. Now it's claiming there'll be another little ice age. So that's the next source in our trail. Where did they get this information about a mini ice age from? The only source given by both newspapers is a press release issued by the 2015 National Astronomy Meeting in Hlandudno. But the press release didn't say there would be another mini ice age or anything like it. It was announcing a presentation by astrophysicist Valentina Zharkova, predicting only a grand solar minimum. So how did this innocent and rather obscure research paper, which confirmed what several other studies had already predicted, get so badly misunderstood? Well, if we go back and look at the trail, it was here. The press release issued by the National Astronomy Meeting was technically correct and reflected the study but it did include some colourful detail in order to attract media attention. Firstly, it said there would be a 60% fall in solar activity. This is correct, but that doesn't mean a 60% drop in total solar irradiance. I emailed Professor Jarkova to confirm the obvious, which she did. She wrote back, That means the maximal number of sunspots in cycle 26 will be 60-70% to lower than in cycle 24. A 60% drop in total solar irradiance would cause the Earth to freeze over completely and extinguish nearly all life. Solar activity is just this tiny fluctuating range at the top, which is why researchers have calculated that the actual fall in total solar irradiance would be a fraction of 1%. And the press release said we can expect conditions last seen during the mini ice age that began in 1645, 
The press release was talking about conditions of solar activity, not climate conditions. Neither Jacova's study nor the press release made any claim that we'd be seeing another mini ice age, let alone a timetable of 15 years. No one is more surprised than Valentina Jarkova that her research prompted a worldwide media storm over the next ice age, said USA Today. Jarkova told the newspaper, In the press release we didn't say anything about climate change. My guess is they heard about the Maunder Minimum. They used Wikipedia or something to find out more about it. In fact, the press release linked journalists to a Wikipedia page on the Little Ice Age, but they obviously didn't read it very carefully. In fact, the scientific reality was in the independent story, just buried several paragraphs down. Since the Earth is now warmer, we're unlikely to see a return to the temperatures experienced then, said the Independent, in complete contradiction to its own headline. And the Telegraph later corrected and redacted its story. The Telegraph admitted that Jarkova's research did not make any prediction about future climate effects. But the scary and inaccurate headlines remained, and it was too little too late anyway. By then, the spurious story had been picked up by blogs, where corrections are never made. This isn't the only trail you can follow to trace back these mini Ice Age myths. Here's one that's been passed around the blogosphere, predicting a mini Ice Age caused by an 8 watts per square metre drop in total solar irradiance. And here's another one, which, as we'll see, eventually leads back to the same source at the end of the trail. Scientists warn of mini Ice Age as sun hibernates during solar minimum. Its source? Not scientists, of course. International Business Times cites a story in the Express newspaper. Earth could be hit by mini ice age as sun hibernates, expert claims. And the Express's source? Apparently this story in the Sun newspaper, and its source is a familiar name, Professor Valentina Jarkova, who told the newspaper the reduction in temperature will result in cold weather on Earth. Which is a bit strange, because, as we've seen, Jarkova herself says she didn't mention the effects of climate in her 2015 study, and neither has she published any research in this field since then. Climatology isn't even her field. When she spoke to USA Today, she expressed surprise that journalists had used her research to make up stories about a coming mini ice age, and suggested that maybe they got it off Wikipedia. And yet now, here she is believing those claims. So where's she getting this from? We'll start with some actual figures. Since Jarkova doesn't publish any research on this, it has to come from a video interview. We look at the calculation of this temperature by Lynn et al. They have a number of papers and they show that um, the temperature on the Earth during the mountain minimum and irradiance was decreased about uh, um, 0.3%. By the way, Jarkova isn't referring to someone called Lena Tal. She's referring to papers by Lean et al. Lean estimates that total solar irradiance during the Maunder minimum was 0.2% lower, not 0.3%. That translates to a negative forcing of around 1 watt per square metre, leading to a lower average global temperature of around 0.1 degrees centigrade. Lean et al. have shown that this will be overwhelmed by the greenhouse gas forcing we're expecting. As we've seen, all the other studies that have looked into the cooling effect of a grand solar minimum come to the same conclusion. It'll have regional effects, but it's not going to make much of a difference to global warming. So if it doesn't come from Lean et al. or her own research, where does Jarkova get her information that the GSM will lead to cold weather, which then becomes a leap into a mini ice age? After all, she must have got it from somewhere. To find out, I sent an email and asked her. Her response was to send me what she called evidence. Not a scientific paper, as you might expect, but two news reports and a video. The first news article didn't predict a mini ice age at all. It was a report on a scientific analysis of a cold spell in the year 536, caused by two major volcanic eruptions. Nothing to do with solar activity. The second was a 2019 report on winter floods in Oman and a temperature of minus 2 degrees at Jabal Shams. But nothing unusual about that. I checked the records and it drops below zero at Jabal Shams every winter because it's the tallest mountain on the Arabian Peninsula, over 9,000 feet high. 
And minus 2 is nowhere near the lowest temperature recorded in 300 years, or even 10 years. Jokova added that there was snow and frost in other Arab countries in January that year, but again, that's not unusual. While temperatures were below average that month in a small part of the Middle East, in the rest of the region it was warmer than average, and pretty much everywhere else in the world. It's a classic example of cherry-picking. In fact, on a global scale, January 2020 was the warmest on record. Sharkova's final piece of evidence was a video by a prepper called David Dubine, who sells survival merchandise. Jarkova pointed to two pieces of what she calls evidence in Dubine's videos on variations of sea level and ice. But these gave false and misleading figures to try to claim that sea levels aren't rising and that Arctic ice isn't melting. I'll take a look at those in a separate video. They represent trends over the last 140 years, so even if the figures were correct, which they're not, they can't be evidence that we're entering a mini ice age this year. Jokova continued to send me more of what she called evidence, this time by a blogger called Cap Allen, again detailing cold weather, conspiracy theories and predictions of a mini ice age. Like Dubain, Cap Allen isn't a climate researcher. As far as I can tell, he lives in Portugal, he puts his theories on his Facebook page, and the only thing he's published are a couple of children's books. So where does Allen get his information from? Well, a lot of it is just his own speculation that we must be facing a mini ice age because of all these cold weather reports he's reading. It's a classic case of, if it's snowing outside, the world can't be warming. The only quantitative evidence he presents is a claim that total solar irradiance will drop by about 8 watts per square metre during the grand solar minimum. And where does he get that from? It comes from a YouTuber called Lee Wheelbarger, featured on Alan's blog in an interview. And Wheelbarger claims he got that figure from Sharkova's analysis. But of course Sharkova never predicted that at all. She hasn't quantified the radiation drop, except to say that sunspot numbers will decline by 60%. As we've seen, during an interview, Jarkova cites the conclusion of Lean et al. that during the Maunder minimum, solar irradiance fell by 0.3%. Actually, Lean et al. said 0.2%, but even if we go with Jarkova's misremembered figure of 0.3%, and even if we assume that the GSM will be as bad as the Maunder minimum, that still means a drop in total solar irradiance of just 4 watts per square metre, not 8. It, we have already done all of the math. Well, what, what effect will global warming or the IPCC's numbers have <laughs> against this? And in fact, <clears throat> yeah, well, I've already done all that math. So the problem seems to be that Wheelbarger worked this out himself. He then compounds the error by assuming that TSI and solar forcing are the same thing. If, so if you do, at worst case scenario, a 1.5 watt per square meter increase in heating based upon the CO2, so there's what, six and a half watts minus per square meter loss in TSI to the planet. If we did get minus 6.5 watts per square meter of forcing, we'd see ice sheets covering almost all of Europe and North America. Such a plunge in forcing would be unprecedented. So we need to look at where Wheelbarger went wrong. Total solar irradiance is the amount of radiation received by one square meter facing the sun above the atmosphere. It's usually a little over 1,360 watts per square meter. But of course, that's not the energy received by every square metre on the ground. We have to divide TSI by four to take account of the Earth's spherical shape, and nearly a third of the radiation is reflected back into space, so we also need to multiply by 0.7 to take account of the Earth's albedo. As a result, one watt per square metre change in TSI results in roughly a 0.18 watt per square metre change in solar forcing on Earth. It could be either positive, forcing temperatures higher, or negative, forcing them lower. 
Solar forcing can also be represented by temperature units. One watt per square meter change in TSI is equivalent to a change in global temperature of around 0.1 degrees centigrade. By the way, these aren't my figures. I'm an amateur in this field, just like Wheelbarger. The calculations come from studies by Meal, Kopp, Lean and others cited in the video description. So let's put Wheelbarger's figures straight. Firstly, Jarkova's 0.3% decrease in TSI is about 4 watts per square meter, not 8. Secondly, a decrease of 4 watts per square meter in TSI works out to a negative forcing of around 0.76 watts per square meter. So if we subtract that from the positive forcing due to greenhouse gases, we get a positive figure, in other words, warming, not cooling. But of course, this claim of an 8 watts per square meter forcing, erroneously attributed to Zharkova, quickly swamped the blogosphere. It's hard to shake the faith of people who believe it. As one solar physicist said, whatever increases the temperature above solar forcing from carbon gases and other factors also has to be addressed. Sharkova didn't look at it. She has to leave that to specialists. Who said that? Sharkova herself. And whatever increases above, it increases more than people expect, probably coming from carbon or others. This has to be addressed. This is, has done... We didn't look at it, so we leave to the specialists who do it. When the Sun's editors discovered that Zharkova isn't an expert in this field and was giving personal beliefs that were contrary to scientific conclusions, they corrected their story, which is unusual for a Murdoch newspaper on the subject of climate change. And equally unheard of, even the Express corrected its story. OK, last one, I promise. Here's the latest addition to this alarmism over a mini ice age. In November 2018, a claim that NASA was predicting global cooling, even a mini ice age, filled the blogosphere. The wording in many of these stories was identical, which showed that they were all copying off each other rather than reading the source of this information, even though it was clearly given. So what did NASA scientist Martin Balunchak tell Space Weather? Well, all the blogs carried this quote. We see a cooling trend. High above the Earth's surface, near the edge of space, our atmosphere is losing heat energy. If current trends continue, it could set a space-age record for cold. So even in the part they quoted, the bloggers and journalists missed the fact that this cooling trend is high above the Earth's surface. In the next couple of paragraphs, space weather explained that this refers to the temperature of the thermosphere, not the temperature here on Earth. The thermosphere is hundreds of kilometres further up, where many satellites orbit. So nowhere did Malunchak say the climate would get cooler, or that we're expecting a mini ice age, either in the space weather interview or his study on which it was based. These misrepresentations were inserted by the bloggers and journalists themselves, and then, of course, spread round the internet. Fortunately, some bloggers did understand the difference between the troposphere and the thermosphere, and this one checked with Malunchak, who was happy to explain it. The claims such as those in the Metro article are false, he wrote. To emphasise, the cooling effects we're seeing in Earth's thermosphere are a result of the current solar minimum conditions. The thermosphere is the layer of Earth's atmosphere beginning 65 miles above the Earth's surface, and is highly sensitive to solar activity. There is no relationship between the natural cycle of cooling and warming in the thermosphere and the weather stroke climate at Earth's surface. NASA even tried to get that message across by dumbing down the language. Yes, the sun is less active, ran its headline. No, you're not likely to notice. Chill out. That's the current message from the sun to Earth's upper atmosphere. To be more precise, as the sun settles into a cyclical natural lull in activity, the upper atmosphere, or thermosphere, far above our own climate system, is responding in kind by cooling and contracting. Could that have implications for folks down here on the surface? Absolutely not. All these mini Ice Age myths are nothing new. Predictions that we're about to enter one go back to that infamous Newsweek article that I covered in an earlier video. But alarmist predictions about imminent cooling continue to be as persistent as claims about the second coming of Jesus. 
As soon as one predicted appearance of this mini Ice Age fails to materialise, another one pops up. So let's take a trip down memory lane. In 2001, Don Easterbrook predicted the global chill would start between 2002 and 2012. But of course it didn't. If we compare Easterbrook's prediction to actual temperatures, he was completely wrong. But researchers who predicted continued warming were completely right. In 2005, two Russian solar physicists who predicted that lower solar activity would see global temperatures fall were offered a $10,000 bet by climatologist James Annan, who said temperatures would rise. The solar physicists lost. Global temperatures did continue rising, just as Annan and other climate researchers had predicted. In 2007, David Archibald predicted that temperatures would drop by about 2 degrees by 2015. He was wrong. Temperatures continued rising, just as climate researchers had predicted. In 2008, Easterbrook tried again, declaring that this time global warming really was over. And the blog What's Up With That agreed. It said the predicted cooling seems to have already begun. It hadn't. Temperatures have continued rising since 2008, just as climate researchers have predicted. The same year, two members of the Global Warming Policy Foundation made a £1,000 bet that 2015 would be colder than 2008. They lost. In 2009, Jay Lair predicted this. We've seen very, very low sunspot activity and uh, we're, we're definitely, in my mind, uh, not only in a cooling period, we're going to be staying in it for a couple decades. We weren't. We didn't. Temperatures continued rising, just as climate researchers had predicted. That same year, Henrik Svensmark declared, global warming has stopped and cooling has begun. He was wrong. He added that no climate model has predicted cooling of the Earth. And on that, he was right. The climate models all predicted warming. And as they predicted, the world did continue to warm. In 2010, Fox News walled of a big chill, complete with a picture of a frozen Statue of Liberty. It quoted a speech by Don Easterbrook, who once again tried declaring global warming over, and from now there would be global cooling. But temperatures continued rising, just as climate researchers had predicted. In 2011, the New Zealand Climate Science Coalition predicted that 2011 would be the coolest year globally since 1956, or even earlier. It turned out to be the ninth warmest on record. The same year, there was a prediction by three Norwegians that the drop in solar activity would cause temperatures to plunge in Svalbard between 2009 and 2020. In fact, temperatures rose, just as climate researchers had predicted. In 2013, Kabibulu Abdusatimov predicted that the Little Ice Age would begin in 2015. But, well, you don't need me to tell you what happened. In 2014, Kevin Long predicted that temperatures would start dropping after 2015 and a deep chill would set in. It didn't. 2016 was the hottest on record and the next five years were the hottest five years on record. And that same year, Oli Humlum predicted a temperature decrease of up to 1 degree centigrade by 2020. Well, we've had a temperature increase of 0.2 degrees. In 2016, Habibulu Abdusatimov, undaunted by his earlier failed prediction that the Little Ice Age was supposed to have started in 2015, declared that his Little Ice Age had started anyway. Now temperatures, he said, would continue to decline. It hadn't. 2015, 16, 17, 18 and 19 were not years of a mini ice age, but the hottest years on record. Despite this trail of failed predictions, the looming mini ice age has always been just around the corner, contrary to scientific studies. And when the batch of blogosphere hysteria over 2020 being the start of the mini ice age fails to materialise, it'll just shift to next year, and then the year after that. Meanwhile, scientific predictions that we would not see global cooling but global warming have all consistently borne out, with a surprising degree of accuracy. 
When I use the term scientific prediction, I mean predictions that would be published in respected, peer-reviewed scientific journals or reports. And in this video, that means global temperature predictions. So please, no what about posts in the forum that say, what about this prediction or that prediction? If there was some other failed prediction you want to comment on, please go to the video I've made on that prediction and that subject. So there are two lessons to be learned from this. Firstly, peer-reviewed science that predicted global warming have been proved right, while bloggers, lobby groups and scientists outside peer-reviewed scientific publishing have been proved wrong. Secondly, if you want to make easy money, make a bet that we won't see a mini ice age in the next 5, 10 or 20 years. But make sure you get all the money put into escrow, because Anand says that the Russian solar physicists who lost the bet with him never paid up.